I'm Tony Ruiz, contributing editor at Gold Derby, here with Michael Pepin, uh, who is a cinematographer on Abbott Elementary. And and Michael, you know, cinematography oftentimes is thought of as like this big kind of grand uh, thing. With you know, ten, people tend to think of the of the of the big vistas and the mountaintops and and <laughs> and fancy camera effects. But there's so much more to it, and especially on a show like this, isn't there? There is, you know, I think one thing about our show is uh, it appears to be rather simple in its execution, but it's actually quite complicated to, um, you know, pretend to be a documentary crew. And so when you're, so it, because it's almost like it, in one of those weird ways where the camera is actually a character in the show. Yeah. So, so as a cinematographer, what, what, what are, what are some of the, what are some of the tools and the tricks that, that you have to pull out uh, to make that happen? Yeah, I mean, we have to stick to the philosophy that we are a documentary, a documentary crew. And, um, you know, a documentary crew has to be, um, uh, you know, fluid. Um, a documentary crew only has a certain amount of cameras, a certain amount of angles that they can uh, capture what's happening from. Um, you know, the, the difference between what we're doing and an actual documentary is in an actual documentary, you're sort of tracking a story, whereas we're interpreting the story. Um, and so we have to be really creative in, in how we block our scenes. Uh, we have to be really creative in where we place our cameras um, because like, look, the, the purpose of what we're doing is to create the illusion of spontaneity. And so uh, we have our tricks and we have a fantastic camera crew that has uh, experience in, in unscripted work. So there's this built-in authentic authenticity to what they're doing. Um, so I think, um, yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a game that we have to play with ourselves. Like what would the actual documentary camera crew do here? Like, um, you know, we ask ourselves, like, what is the scene? Um, you know, is this a scene where, the crew can sort of be with our characters. You know, are we in the teacher's lounge? We're all hanging out. Um, so therefore the crews, the cameras can be right there with them in the action participating. Or is this a private moment between uh, Gregory and Janine? And do the cameras need to be backed off? Do they need to be shooting through a window, a door frame? You know, we have to ask ourselves that pretty much every scene. And, um, Again, back to like, it, it really comes down to, um, you know, the the blocking first and foremost. It's it because, um, again, back to, we can't cover things traditionally. Like we can't go for an over the shoulder shots because uh, uh, not all of the time necessarily. Um, we can't necessarily go for um, an over the shoulder shot if the other camera is gonna see that camera operator. Right. So we have to block it in a way where maybe the, the actor uh, moves and brings us sort of to our um, to our camera lines. Um, I know I rambled there, but no, no, uh, yeah. no. Because, but one of the things I find so fascinating is is this kind of delicate dance that you have to do, because I, yeah. I mean, my assumption is you're using multiple cameras sometimes for a single take, but it has to be blocked in such a way that you don't see the other cameras yeah yeah i mean that's a that's a game that that we play it's like um look it wouldn't be the end of the world if you saw another camera in a documentary right it's a little more real but even when you're filming documentaries you're trying to avoid that it's just kind of a, a general rule um i'll give you an example uh, i think it's season two episode one i think it's one or two i think it's one and um we're in the car with quinta and she's uh, doing a talking head as she's driving and she's approaching the school. And when she um, gets to the school, there's uh, this huge festival for the Eagles. And so we had to um, film her in the car, right? So it was our, our camera operator, Jeremiah was in the car with her. And then we reset for the second part where she arrives and, and talks to uh, Ava and Mr. Johnson's there. 
And so we pulled that, that uh, camera out of the car. But we specifically avoided shooting the passenger seat because, um, again, we're <laughs> like we're beholden to these rules of documentaries. So if we had in the next cut shown a two shot of her and the, the passenger seat, well, we would be expecting a camera to be in that car. So we just avoided it. So we go really far to hold on to the authenticity of, you know, being a documentary. Oh, yeah. I wonder if that puts the camera operators in a really interesting position because they're kind of like they're kind of like the 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 receivers of the information, particularly in the kind of the talking head segments. They love it. Uh, it's it's like the best job for them ever. Like they're you said it earlier, they're they're fully participants. They're the eyes and ears, the viewers. Um, we do. You know, we don't do a ton of takes. We do maybe five or six takes per scene. And as the scenes go on, they're finding more details within the scenes. Their left eye is open so they know, um, you know, there's a reaction there that they can, can go to for the next take. They're constantly absorbing the information and then, um, you know, um, gathering it. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun for them. It's very active. It's a very physical job. They're all athletes. They have to be. Um, and uh, yeah, we put them in a lot of fun positions. So I, I've, I've heard you, I've read in, in other interviews you've done, you've talked about kind of like the importance of, and you mentioned it a couple of times here, but the, the, having some experience or background in documentary filmmaking kind of like really helps prepare you to even do, to do this type of job. Do you see a lot of similarities between just working in nonfiction film and working in, in narrative film? Well, yeah, I mean, the, this style of, of shooting, this uh, sort of our version of the mockumentary, um, I really believe that it started with uh, Randall Einhorn, who is one of our executive producers and he's our lead director as well. Because in an actual documentary or reality show, you're not nearly as active, right? You are chasing it. So I think that's sort of where Randall's philosophy came from because again, you're tracking the story. So you have to be very active, but this, this, this extra like zooming and, and this, this, the speed at, with, at which we are participating, we, it's very much created by uh, by Randall. So um, the original question was, you know, are there similarities between, uh, you know, this uh, scripted and unscripted? Um, yes, of course. In that, you know, your the, the the skills you need to to film unscripted are are clearly the same you need for um, our um, mockumentary. But it's it's different. It's amplified. It's this new style that he created way back in the office, which is clear, clearly in our DNA as well. Yeah, what, I, I wanted to Thomas? ask. I wanted I wanted to ask about Randall. I wanted to ask about Randall because yeah. he, he he very much you know seems to thrive on on this on the and it and it's a blueprint that kind of goes over the whole series. What is it about his? style yeah. his his skills as a director that um that make it work so well with this show he just fully fully believes in what i described earlier like we're making a documentary so it, and it's all about the authenticity for him and there's never something that's written that is um you know he'll say uh you know we'll we'll read you know a rather difficult scene that we know is going to be challenging with a bunch of people, a lot going on, a large space. And um, we both know it's complicated, but he'll look at me and say, I ain't scared. <laughs> so he thrives on solving these cinematic puzzles, right? Within this world. It's just, it's deeply ingrained in him. Um, and he just looks at things in a different way. You know, I might say, you know, I'm not sure how we're going to sneak this camera in here at this moment. And he'll be like, well, let's put him under a desk. And I'll be like, okay. And then, and then when the camera pans away, they come out from beneath the desk and they're in. I'll be like, 
absolutely. That works. Let's make it happen. So again, back to, and that's a lot of fun for the operators. It's like, Hey, Jeremiah, you're going to be in the closet for the first, first part of the scene. And then I'll cue you and you'll have to sneak out and slide in next to Brenda. Um, Drew, I'm going to need you to, I think it was the Halloween episode. Um, we had a long scene where, uh, it begins in the admin office and then it, they walk down the hallway and it sort of ends mid hallway. And so we had to have a camera covering the first part of the scene. And once you go down the hallway, they sort of have no way to get to then join the scene, right? We like to run three cameras on every scene. So um, I went to our um, costumes department and I asked them if they had a, a costume that they could put Drew in. Drew is six foot five. <laughs> so for, so they pulled out some sort of zombie costume. So um, we start the scene and Drew is cross covering, he's filming. And um, as they make their way down the hallway, if you look deep in the background, you'll see this six foot five zombie walking through the back of the frame. And as soon as he's passed the frame, he's running through the library, he's running through another classroom and then landing on his 50-50 shot. So we have a lot of fun in sort of figuring out the puzzle in the documentary world that, you know, we're, we try to stick to. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause you talk about the, the, the looking at the script and wondering how you're going to, how you're going to film that and working with the directors. Um, I'm curious if there was a moment in season two where you looked at us at a moment or a scene in the script and went, I have no idea how I'm going to pull this off. <laughs> um, I mean, off the top of my head, there that happens quite a bit, especially the first time I read a script. Um, as far as a specific theme, um, I suppose one I could bring up is the Ava fundraiser, and it was written, I think, um, basically about four pages just that didn't cut. It was, you know, there's a scene amongst our teachers, then uh, Tariq appears, um, then Tariq makes his way to the stage, and then um, Janine and, and Gregory have something to say about it, and then, you know, uh, Tariq gets into his rap, and Randall wanted to just play that sort of as a one -er. so we we just kind of figured it out. I mean, we we cross covered the top of it, and then as Tariq is making his way towards the stage, we had uh, Jeremiah on a butt dolly, and he's he's backpedaling with them, and he lets Tariq go, and then he's back on Janine and Gregory for their line, and then he whips back to the stage, and he falls back into his like you know master position. Um, so there, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of um, you know, how are we going to do this within the confines of, um, you know, the world that we uh, have created for ourselves? Do, do you approach it from a cinematography standpoint, do you approach drama mm -hmm. different than comedy or do you, do you see them as kind of the same? No, I mean, well, from a lighting perspective, um, I try not to, it's, it's, it's always, you know, motivation uh, in lighting and, and camera work. So no, I wouldn't approach comedy and drama differently at all. I mean, I suppose in comedy, you're a little more, um, you know, uh, you're a little, um, you have a little more fill light, right? Um, you know, you want it to be, uh, well, and again, that just depends on what the scene is. I mean, if it's a, if we're in a club, and we're shooting a comedy, we're in a club. I'm not gonna like bring the lights up. Um, <laughs> but you know, you can you can go a little further in, in drama, but but no, it's really about the motivation. Where is the light coming from? What time of day is it? What is the tone of the scene? What's the mood of the scene? Um, and then you know, the camera work, it, it just depends on the genre that we're working in. I, I, I have to ask this question because I'm a normal, I'm a high school teacher in my normal nine to five job. And so I'm curious okay. as to how you manage to capture that kind of harsh, antiseptic, fluorescent lighting that is like the, the tradition in so many schools. <laughs> 
I mean, look, the school um, was based on an actual real location. Uh, and Michael Whetstone, our production designer, um, recreated it on a, on a stage to perfection. And, and the actual school has fluorescent lights in the ceiling and uh, you have to embrace it. Um, you know, I'll, I'll shape it as much as I can. You know, I'll turn some of those overhead fluorescents off um, that you don't see and I'll, I'll uh, you know, I'll wrap or I'll bring those down. You just kind of have to play with it because you don't want it to be, you know, it's got to look good. You got to be um, happy with the way it looks um, and you want your actors to look great. Um, yeah, so the hallways are very fluorescent lighting. I try to bring as much uh, natural light as I possibly can in. So, you know, we have transoms over the, the doors and I'll try to push in as much as I can. Um, our classrooms are very, um, very much um, window motivated. We have giant windows in our classrooms. So I usually won't even have um, our, um, our overheads on in the classrooms um, unless, you know, it's later in the day and, and in reality, those would take over, but really the window light is what takes over. So um, yeah, and that's cool that you're, uh, you're a high school teacher. So um, you must uh, be connected to the show. You have, uh, do you enjoy it? Uh, 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 immensely, immensely, mostly because it looks <laughs> exactly like the spaces where I spend my days. And 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 the lighting, I think, has a lot to do That's with cool. that. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Michael, uh, congratulations. I mean, you know, Abbott Elementary is such a big hit, and and uh, it was wonderful to talk to you. Everybody, go to goldderby.com, make your predictions for the Emmys, and stay tuned for interviews with more contenders throughout the season. Uh, Michael Pepin, thank you very much. 